look to the Lord in prayer before I break the word. Eternal God, I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I just want to magnify you for allowing us just to be in your house once more, dear God. So many places and persons couldn't be here this morning. So many things have happened, and in some countries, they're not free to worship, but we're glad in this country we are. So we give you thanks now. As we're about to break your word, dear God, hide me behind the cross. Use me to do that which you'd have me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I want to speak on love. And yes, I know it's Christmas and it's not Valentine. <laughs> but I still want to speak on love. The Christmas season has something to do with love. This season is the best time to even talk about love, right? What better time to give it? What better time to show it than in the Christmas season? So today's topic, I want you guys all to listen. Today's topic is love in action. Love in action. That is today's topic. Now, before I even say anything else, you might be saying, you know, what, what does love have to do with this? You know, I love my wife, I love my kids. There are different types of love. You know, yeah, there are different types of love. So I got to tell people. Some people are like, I don't know what he's talking about. Well, when we use the word love, there are different types of love. And I can't go through all of them today. So if you want to find out the different types, see me in the office. Because <laughs> it's a long study. But the one I want to talk about today is called agape love. Agape. Now let me just read a little definition of it so you know where I'm going. Agape is a universal love, such as the love for strangers, nature, or God. It does not depend on familiarity. That means you don't have to be familiar with the person to love them. Ooh, really? Yeah, let's see some more. This is the love referred to as charity by Christianity in the Bible. So when you hear, the, you know, charity never faileth, charity is not puffed up, and all of that thing in the Bible, it's talking about the agape love, right? Now, listen to this. Agape can be defined as unselfish concern for the welfare of others. Mm. You see how it comes into the Christian principle now, because we should do that. And now you understand why I'm saying love in action. And so the first thing I want to talk about with love in action this morning is this. Show love in a practical way. Listen. Show love in a practical way. Let me explain. If someone is in need of something and you can fill that need, then fill it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, simple. If someone is in need of something, fill it, right? No, let me tell you this. If I wasn't, say I was out there and I wasn't a Christian and one of you guys came and wanted to talk to me about God and I'm hungry. <laughs> Listen, carry me out and fill my stomach first and then we can talk about God on a full stomach, Okay. <laughs> Because no matter what you're saying about God, I can't hear you. All I hear is the gas in the belly moving up and down. You know those little worms? <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. You see, when people are going through stuff and you tell them that Jesus loves them, they don't want to hear that right now. They're like, what? This is not the time for that. But if you show them God's love when they're going through them, their stuff, then it opens up a door for them to see the love of God. Listen, even Jesus did it. Jesus did love in action. And when we show love to other individuals, they will see it through our lives consistently. Let me, let me give you a verse here. Look at St. John chapter 5. And we're also going to look at verse 11 and verse 12. But look at St. John 6 verse 5. It says... When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus was teaching all day and teaching and teaching and teaching. And the people got what? Hungry and hungry and hungry. <laughs> That's why Bible study is only one hour. <laughs> 
Come on. If I had Bible study for five hours, everybody would be like, <laughs> and they would leave. So I'm just being practical. So you need to understand, even Jesus, our master, our teacher, after teaching for a good couple of hours, is like, Philip, the people are hungry. Where can we get something for them to eat? I want to look at the rest of these two verses now. Look at this in verse 11 and verse 12. It says, Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. And look at this. It says, and when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather up the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. In other words, in case they get hungry again, we got spear. <laughs> we have left over. Right? Jesus showed love in a practical way. He was concerned not only for the people to learn the word, but he was concerned about their well-being. Too many Christians want people to come to church and they don't know how they get into church. What? The person might not have a pair of shoes to wear to church. They might not have church clothes because some people will not come if they don't have the right clothes. I'm telling you. Come on, we've been through, down this road many times with other persons. Sometimes they don't have a right to get here. Some of us need to start opening back the car doors and carpool and bring some people to church, right? So we need to remember that we need to show love in a practical way. Be practical with the love of Christ then more people will be interested to hear about the God that you serve. Secondly, I want you to show love unselfishly. What? Can somebody show love selfishly? Oh, yes, they can. Don't keep the love of God to only the persons you feel deserve it. What are you talking about, Pastor? Okay, good, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Example, you have two neighbors, one on this side and one on this side. Now, the one on this side goes to church. He a brother of the faith. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. The one on this side, they don't really go to church. Every Sunday they do something else. They don't go to church and stuff. But when a problem occurs, you, as a child of God, always help out your church brother. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Something wrong with this? Huh? Mm. Yeah, I'll help you this time. Oh, you, oh, I I'll help you this time. It's like we're fighting to go across the fence because they're not a child of God. Listen, we must show love unselfishly. Whether it's a brother in the faith or not a brother in the faith, still show love. Don't feel that you are the one that has the monopoly on love that you shouldn't share it. But, but, but pastor... They don't even go to church on a Sunday. They hardly come. Why should we help them? Well, probably the reason why they're not coming to church is because of you. Because <laughs> you're not showing any love. You are the witness and they're looking at it and they're like, man, my neighbor never talks to me. My neighbor never helps me. My neighbor, you know, listen, we need to pay attention. We need to share love unselfishly. Look at Luke chapter 6, verse 32 and 33. It says, If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even the sinners do the same. In other words, people that are not in church is going to love someone that shows love to them. So that means the Christians who are supposed to be called to a higher order are supposed to what? Do more. But pastor, no, don't but pastor me. But the Bible, I didn't say it. <laughs> God said it. We are called with God's love to show other persons. So even when the person don't like you and you see that they need help, the love of God compels you. That's how it's supposed to go. The love of God is unselfish. Spread it across the board evenly, right? Especially to the ones you think that don't deserve it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something about love. This unselfish love will melt the coldest of hearts. 
I've seen persons. I, I, I knew of an individual that he, he didn't even remember. The way he didn't like me that much. We were friends before, but something happened and he didn't like me because someone told a lie on me. I don't know. I don't know that someone told a lie on me, but he didn't like me because of that. And so he put in his phone, don't ever answer this number. <laughs> and, what, and I'm telling you, when things started to go bad with him, and his very own family weren't around him. Even though I knew he wasn't talking to me, I went around and I supported him. I went around and I helped him. And I, till that person looked at me and said, I never knew it would come to this. I said, what? He says, I mean, at one time I thought you were faking this Christianity thing. But you really are a child of God. Because even when my family isn't here, you are still here. That's what he said to me. And you want to know how I know the phone said, don't answer this number, you lost this phone one time. And he said, ring it for me. <laughs> and I ring it and I found it and it says, never answer this number. <laughs> and I never let him know that I found that out. I still showed him the love of God. We're good friends to this day. I'm telling you, the love of God will melt the coldest of hearts. Third and finally, I want you guys to know this. Show love compassionately and respectfully. You hear those two? Compassionately and respectfully. They go hand in hand. Because sometimes your compassion gets too overzealous and can cause problems. So listen, let's look at this one. You find out that your neighbor is sick. You know, they're having the flu. <coughs> oh, the flu. They can't move and they're over the house. So, you bring them a cup of chicken noodle soup. Amen. That's good. When you go inside the house, you see a mountain of dishes. Now, don't say, well, I already brought the soup. <laughs> Somebody else needs to come and wash the dishes. No, I don't want you to look at me strange because it does happen. <laughs> you have people that pick and choose the good that they do. Come on. I'm being honest here. People know this is true. So you walk in and you see the dishes and you're like, oh. here's the soup, bye. <laughs> and you leave, right? Listen, be compassionate. Have some compassion about you that you want to go all the way with someone that is in need, right? When you go all the way with someone that is in need, then you are showing God's love. Respectfully, though, means you ask the person, can I wash up the dishes like how you're not feeling so well? They go hand in hand. Because if you don't do that, you can love someone till you offend them. Pastor, what are you talking about? We're living in today's world, and sometimes if you go to somebody's house, and this is right here, <laughs> even though they're sick, it's better you say, can I move it to here before you touch anything? I'm living in a real world. <laughs> because guess what? You might say, okay, I'll fix it myself. Who told you to touch this? You come into my house and start messing up stuff. Show love compassionately and respectfully. So if you do a part with your compassion and they stop you and say, okay, I'm okay, I'll do. Then you have done what you can do and you leave. Right? Don't force love on someone because then it might become an offense. Let me show you from the scripture. I always back up what I'm saying with scripture. Matthew 14, verse 13 and 14. Right? This is the compassion one first. It says, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. Don't move from that verse here. Go back. I want to explain something. Give you a little backdrop of what is happening there. Now, when Jesus heard it, what did you, what's the it? <laughs> I need to tell you so you can know where Jesus is in this point in this story. Jesus had just heard that his cousin was beheaded, John the Baptist, and it moved him. His heart moved. This is his cousin, right? No matter how many generations, it's still his family. And it's his cousin, so he found out his cousin was just killed in the prison. And so he was mourning, so he took away from the crowd and went to somewhere by himself where he could just like, oh, you know what, let me 
pray to God. Let me just, because it's morning. Someone died for you. But it says in the scripture, when the crowd heard it, what is their it? They heard that Jesus was there. <laughs> so they don't business that, you know, Jesus had a problem. They heard that Jesus was there, so they followed him on foot from the cities. Continue to the other part now. Now we see what is happening. And when Jesus went out, because the crowd was coming, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Think about this. Compassion means sometimes you have to put away your own feelings just to help somebody else. Wow. You were going to do this today, but when you look and realize this person needs help, they can't go do any, buy any groceries, they can't do anything for themselves, you said, you know what, I'm going to put my business aside and go and help this person. That's compassion. Jesus had a death in the family. And when Jesus saw the people still following him, even though he retreated to himself, he said, you know what? Oh my, these people need help. He had compassion and he started to heal their sick. Right? I want you to see this other verse now. Matthew 8, verse 8. Look at this. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. In other words, the guy stopped Jesus from coming to his house. Jesus already left where he was going, you know, and coming to this man's house to heal his servant. And the man stopped Jesus and said, mm -mm, don't come into my house. You're, I'm not worthy. Right? He wants the blessing. He wants the healing for his servant. But I'm not worthy. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus said, I've never seen so much faith. But he respectfully did not go into the man's house. And he said the word and the servant was healed. We need to understand that respect keeps boundaries. And so some people like their boundaries, and once you don't cross it, then you're able to minister to them the love of God. So sometimes compassion comes with love respectfully. So I want you to remember this. It's the Christmas season, and everywhere you go, people are giving gifts. Why not give some love this Christmas? Spread some of God's love all over the place. Spreading God's love goes a far way. May we allow God to use each and every one of us to share his love, especially in this season, to all those we come in contact with. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, sometimes we forget that we are not called to just be in this structure, dear Lord. Sometimes we're called to go outside to see persons that need just an encouraging word. Some persons just need a phone call. Some persons just need someone to listen. And many times we forget that you have placed God's love in our heart. And sometimes we, we, we sit on it and we don't want to share it with anybody else. We are selfish with your love at times, dear God. And sometimes we forget to share love in a practical way. Many times, dear God, we are quick to cast judgments on other persons. Why is this person not coming to church? Why are they not here anymore? Well, it could be because their car is down and they need a ride here. I'm praying, dear God, that we show love in a practical way. I'm praying, dear God, that we show love unselfishly. I'm praying, dear God, that we show love through compassion and respect to win souls for your kingdom. And I pray that we might do it this season, Christmas season, more than any other season, so that people may know this season was built on love. It was because of God's love sending his son for us while we're even here today. So we thank you, dear God, and we praise you now in Jesus' mighty name, as you taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So this season of Christmas, let us all show some love.